the nonpartisan Cook Political Report, issuing maybe an SOS to Democrats in two key battlegrounds in the wake of Pelosi's troops voting for the Articles of Impeachment. In Michigan, Independent Congressman Justin Amash's district has moved from toss-up to leaning Republican after Amash left the GOP, became a fierce critic of the president, and supported impeachment. And after Pennsylvania's Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright, who represents the district the president carried in 2016, voted for impeachment, his race has now become a toss-up. Well, Republican Congressman Guy Reschenthaler also represents Pennsylvania. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee. He joins me now. Congressman, appreciate you coming in. Merry Christmas, Ed. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Uh, what's happening here? Is this boomeranging on Democrats when you see districts in Michigan and Pennsylvania where the lawmakers supported impeachment are suddenly moving towards the Republicans? This is totally backfiring on the Democrats. And I think Nancy Pelosi let this get way out in front of her. Uh, I think if she were really calling the shots, this wouldn't have gone this far. But we have to remember that the far left social justice Democrats are running this party now. But we are seeing that Trump is up in my home state of Pennsylvania. He's leading the Democrat contenders sometimes by double digits. He's up in Wisconsin and Michigan. And in all those battleground districts, mm -hmm. the districts where Democrats hold seats where Trump won, like you just mentioned, Cartwright's seat in uh, central Pennsylvania, I think we're going to get a lot of those seats back and take back the House in 2020. Well, that, that's a bold statement, obviously. Another bold statement this morning on MSNBC, uh, former Congressman Joe Scarborough uh, ripping into the president. Watch this. The president should do something that he's never done before and read the Constitution of the United States. He might actually understand how the Speaker of the House has that power. So the idea that the Speaker is holding back these articles of impeachment and some of her supporters are cheerleading the idea that somehow she has this power to do that. Yeah, well, you know, for the last few weeks, the Democrats have been talking about the Constitution. They've been acting like they're constitutional scholars. But the key words in the provision is that the House has the sole uh, duty to impeach and the Senate has the sole responsibility to try the president. The key word is soul. So I don't know if I was sick the day they taught law in law school, but I'm pretty sure that the House has nothing to do with the trial in the Senate once impeachment is kicked to the Senate. It's a two-step process. It's two separate silos. But yeah. look, let Nancy Pelosi hold the articles of impeachment because the longer this drags out, the more swing voters and independents are coming to Republicans in droves. And I know some people think it's a bold statement, but I really do think we're going to take back the House in 2020. And I think that President Trump is going to win in 2020 because the polls yep. are showing that independents are tired of impeachment. They think it's a sham and they know this is a political hit job. You certainly have polls to back that up. On the other hand, to press you, Congressman, uh, does Nancy Pelosi have a point when she suggests, hold on, I'm going to hold this back because Mitch McConnell is signaling that maybe this will not be a fair trial? When your fellow Republican, not a Democrat, but a Republican, Lisa Murkowski, is saying she's concerned essentially that this is going to be unfair. How do you respond to Murkowski? Well, the whole process, Ed, has been unfair. Let me just say this about the senator from Alaska. She also made statements, too, about Nancy Pelosi and the fact that this whole process was rushed. It was done on a political timeline to wrap it up in the House before mm -hmm. Christmas. The mainstream media is not picking that up. They're only picking up her criticism of Mitch McConnell. But let me go back to the process. Sure. The process has been rigged from the very beginning. We have to remember that over 70 Democrats voted to impeach the president before the July phone call, over 70. 17 Democrats on the House Judiciary Committee had voted to impeach the president before the phone call uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So how was it fair? How was it, how was it fair when the president was denied the right to have exculpatory evidence, which is evidence favorable to him, presented in those closed-door hearings that Adam Schiff was having? I this hear you. entire process has been a political hit job. Sure. And if it was a judicial proceeding, let me tell you, as a former magisterial district judge, I would have dismissed these articles on day number one for lack of merit. I'm not defending how the House did it. Uh, you're certainly right to get out there uh, and, and attack away. We've heard all the attacks on Adam Schiff uh, and the rest. But my question really is when a Republican and Lisa Murkowski, and you're right, that she also said that she felt like it was rushed in the House. So you have that point. But if the president believes he's innocent, you believe the president's innocent, why not have a trial where we can hear from a Mick Mulvaney or others who were on the inside? And if the president do, didn't do anything wrong, he'll be he'll be acquitted quickly. 
I, well, I'm looking forward to seeing the evidence presented in the Senate because I think that the evidence was, that was presented um, to the House was, was not there to support either article of, of impeachment. Mm -hmm. And I think that when we see this exposed in the Senate, the American people are going to see just how this was a flimsy case, yeah. the evidence isn't there, and how weak the Democrats' articles of impeachment really are. I think it's going to backfire on the Democrats. But I will say this. If those witnesses were so important, why were they not called in the House? Why did sure. the Democrats not go to the courts, just like the Republicans did in the Fast and Furious scandal? Fair question. And, they say what it Taken months and months. The president. They say it would have taken months and months. Last question. That's why we have three branches of government, sure. though. But thanks, Ed. And yeah. you mentioned that you're an attorney, uh, and so we'll take that. Uh, and last question would be, um, do you think then, since you believe this has been an unfair process, why even have a trial if Nancy Pelosi is going to hold back the articles? Do you think that Senator Mitch McConnell should move towards a motion to dismiss and get a simple up or down vote, get 51 votes to put this to bed once and for all? Ed, I'm with two minds. The former district judge in me says dismiss this on day one because there's lack of merit. The Democrats can't make out what we lawyers call a prima facie case. They don't have the facts to meet the elements of the crimes mm -hmm. uh, alleged. Now, the political animal in me says let's make this a trial. Let's drag all the witnesses out. Let's hear from Hunter Biden. Let's hear from Adam Schiff's staff. Let's hear from the whistleblower that I tried to subpoena when this was going through the Judiciary Committee in the House. Let's hear from all the witnesses and show the American people just what a joke this entire process was, how weak the evidence was, and how this was a completely manufactured case to try to take down President Trump before he wins the 2020 election. Well, I hear both sides there. I hear the reasoned attorney in you, and I hear the political animal who sounds a whole lot more passionate about having a trial, getting Hunter Biden, <laughs> and, and airing all this out. So we'll see which prevails in the days ahead. Congressman, thanks for coming in. Thanks, Ed.